a heart fully hello to all of you who love journaling like I do. In today's video we will learn about the nine benefits of self-reflection and I will share some self-reflection ideas and questions with you to practice, learn and grow. Before we start, let me quickly introduce myself. Hi, it's Monica, your intuitive trauma transformation coach who helps you face and successfully navigate through the storms of life, guiding you through a most powerful self-healing process and teaching you all the mindfulness tools you need to embark on your journey to your core self and create the life you've always envisioned. Number one, knowing your core values. The deeper you go into yourself, and become self-aware, the more easily you identify your core personal values. When you know what matters most to you, it's easier to identify the why behind the choices you make, the company you keep, and the things you want to do with your life. And it will become easier and easier to know why something bothers you and whether you should do something about it or not. <laughs> Two, understanding your purpose and potential or your meaning in life. Knowing your unique potential and purpose begins with self-reflection. The more conscious you are of your strengths and weaknesses, the more you can see what you are able to contribute and what you need to work on. And you are more likely to focus your energy where it will do the most good. Part of your self-reflection should include questioning the limiting beliefs regarding your potential, your identity and your purpose. You might have been holding on to these limiting beliefs already for much too long. Some beliefs are not worth keeping and you learn to recognize that and let them go. Three, big picture thinking. Daily self-reflection helps you make sense of the world and your place in it. When you are aware of what matters most to you, you are less likely to get sidetracked by petty details and you will be better able to put things in perspective. You'll become a big picture thinker. Your self-awareness will make it easier for you to stand outside yourself and your emotions, as well as the emotions of other people. And as soon as you can distance yourself and just be an observer of what happens, it's much easier to be fully present without being overwhelmed. And you can start to allow your intuition to guide you to the right vantage point. And from there, you can see what you never saw before. Four, facing your fears. Recognizing your fears for what they are and seeing what blessings are on the other side of those fears can give you the strength you need to face them. As you grow in self-awareness, you will even have a desire to face them, believe me. And your courage will grow as you conquer one after the other. Five, better decision-making. With self-reflection, you become more aware of your inner voice, your gut feeling, and what we call intuition. With a stronger connection to who you are at your core or soul level, you'll find it easier to make decisions and trust your inner voice and what's it telling you. And the more self-aware you are, the less distracted you are likely to be by other people's opinions and other mental clutter. And that means 
you can think more clearly. And clear thinking leads to breakthroughs. We all know that. Six, better relationships. The better you know yourself, the easier it becomes to see the connections between you and the people around you. Your emotional intelligence grows with your self-awareness. The higher your EQ, the easier it is to connect with others on a deeper level and less likely you are to worry about what they think of you. You will also have a better sense of what the people close to you really need because you'll be more aware and respectful of your own true needs. You know what EQ is? EQ stands for emotional intelligence, which is the ability to perceive, understand and manage one's own emotions and relationships. It involves being aware of emotions in oneself and others and using this awareness to guide thinking and behavior. Emotionally intelligent individuals can motivate themselves, read social cues and build strong relationships. Number seven, the seventh benefit, less stress and anxiety. The more self-aware you become, the less likely you are to worry about what has happened in the past, what hasn't happened yet or what could happen. I'm not saying you'll suddenly stop feeling anxiety. But if you are more aware of the reasoning behind the anxiety, you can offer a counter argument based on things you know to be true. It's about truth. <laughs> thoughts are powerful. When you are living more consciously, your thoughts can help you to weather the storms even if you can't prevent them from ever happening, of course. Eight, number eight, better sleep. As long as bedtime isn't your self-examination time, you are likely to fall asleep sooner if you are not worried or anxious anymore. You'll sleep even better if you set the stage for it. Start by expressing gratitude for the day and its blessings. Then offer any remaining concerns to love, to the source of all good or to whatever spirit you trust to guide you. And set a good intention for the next day. The less you carry with you to the pillow, the freer your mind will be to rest. The ninth and last benefit, self-acceptance, self-love and compassion. Self-acceptance is impossible without self-knowledge, which comes after self-examination. Only when you start self-reflecting on a daily basis, you can recognize the areas that need work and learn to appreciate your unique gifts. So only then can you learn to love unconditionally, forgive wholeheartedly and accept yourself deeply and completely as you are without needing anyone's permission. Before I reveal the self-reflection questions, I would like to mention my video about the examen, a wonderful ritual to do before you go to bed and fall asleep. All right, there are three main questions to reflect on. Who am I? What are my core values? Who do I want to be as the true authentic me? Then you could add, what am I good at? What did I learn from my last mistake? What do I admire most about the people I look up to as role models? But there are other deep self-reflection questions like, what do I love most about my life? 
What are five things I feel grateful for today? What am I taking for granted? What is it that makes me feel most confident? Am I taking adequate care of myself physically, mentally, spiritually? What three qualities do I admire most in myself? What three qualities do I admire most in others? What kind of things make me most uncomfortable? How am I allowing negative thoughts to influence my thinking? Am I focusing on the things that will help me achieve my goals? What is one thing I can do today that will make me feel accomplished when I go to sleep tonight? What am I doing most about the most important things to me in my life? What 10 words best describe me today? If today was the last day of my life, how would my plans for the day change? How were my previous relationships influencing my current relationship? What is it that makes me feel valued in my relationships? How can I better communicate with the important people in my life? How comfortable do I feel being my authentic self in my relationship? What value do I bring to my relationships? What qualities are most important to me in a relationship? Do my partner and I want the same thing in life? What role do I expect my partner to play in my life? What are my views on marriage in general? How satisfied am I with our sex life? Do my partner and I have similar views on money and finances? Big topic. What is one thing I can do to make my relationship stronger? Do we hold similar views on religion and how important is that? What does a successful, healthy relationship look like to me? What about my significant other that I am most attracted to? Am I a better person now than I was one year ago, five years ago, ten years ago? Am I introverted, extroverted or somewhere in between? What talents or skills do I have that give me a sense of pride or satisfaction? What do I do to recover from setbacks quickly and what more can I do? What do I do differently when I'm alone versus around others? What matters to me most in life? What is one life lesson I've learned in the past year? What have I done recently that's worth remembering? What do I feel guilty about and is my guilt warranted? What do I need to do differently to be the person I want to be? What would I do if I loved myself unconditionally? How can I act on those things now? What is my purpose in life? What are my deepest insecurities? What am I holding on to what needs to go? What can I learn more about to help me live a more fulfilling life? How is my mental health right now on a scale of one to five or one to 10? What is the kindest thing I can do for myself when I'm not okay? What do I blame myself for? Were those things really my fault? Do I care too much about what others think of me? Do I truly believe I am worthy of good things in my life? Why or why not? Have I attached my mistakes or failures to my worth rather than part of the process? 
When was the last time I stepped outside my comfort zone? And when can I do it again? What is bothering me right now that is beyond my control? What is it that I'm really afraid of? Am I too hard on myself? What can I learn from my biggest mistakes? When do I feel happiest and most like my authentic self? What am I struggling with now? What are three things I can do to relax my mind and soul? How can I recover from any unhealed past traumas? When am I most creative and why do I think that is? What are some of the most exciting discoveries I've made about my studies and myself as a student? What am I most curious about and why? How can I use what I've learned to better my future? What are my three greatest strengths? My three greatest weaknesses? What do I need to do to meet my academic or professional goals? What were some of the biggest challenges I faced and what made them so? Am I putting forth the best effort in my work? What's one thing about myself I would like to work to improve? What can I do today to develop better study habits or working habits for the future? What are some of the most profound things I've learned and what made them so profound? What do I like most about the learning experience? What do I like least? In what ways is my learning process similar to others? In what ways is it different? What is something I learned that I want to remember forever? Why is getting a good education most important for me? Like always, Please comment below and then email me to get a PDF of all the questions. If you like this video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and hit the bell as well. YouTube shows my videos to a broader audience if there are comments. And if you are in a hurry, please just leave an emoji. Thanks so much. Namaste, namaste. Peace begins with me. And don't forget, you deserve to break free and live your magic every day. Bye.